Question number 6. f of x equals kx cube minus 15x square minus 32x minus 12. Given x minus 3 is a factor of f of x, show that k equals 9. Here you are given a function f of x and x minus 3 is a factor of f of x. So the moment you see this line, x minus 3 is a factor of x, you need to know that you are going to apply the factor theorem, not a long, long division method. So they want you to prove that this constant k is 9. So the factor theorem says, if x minus a, if x minus a is a factor of f of x, your f of a is 0. f of a, replace x by this a. In this case, replace x by 3, so your remainder will be 0. You are not supposed to use the long division method. So when you when you replace x by 3 here, it's supposed to be f of 3 is 0. So replace x by 3 and make k as a subject. So when you replace x by 3, k into 3 cube minus 15 times 3 square minus 32 times 3 minus 12 is 0. So we need to find k. The good thing is, you know the value of k already. So when you simplify this, 3 cube is 9 3 is 27 k minus 9 times 15, 90, 45, 135 minus 96 minus 12 is 0. Now make k as a subject. So your 27 k will be this will be 108, 235, 243, 243. So your k is 243 divided by 27, which is going to be 9. 9 to so 180 plus 63 is 243. That's it. So you also, you need to know what a factor theorem is and the remainder theorem. So in this case, we are not going to apply the remainder theorem. We use factor theorem and we put it as f of 3 is 0. So you can straight away find the value of k. Part B, using algebra and showing each step of your working, fully factorize the function f of x. The question carries 4 marks. In part B, they want you to fully factorize the function f of x. Before factorize, we replace k by 9. Because in part A, we got k equals 9. Now, we have the function and we know x minus 3 is a factor. So, this is when we are going to use the long division method. So, use long division method. 9x cubed minus 15x squared minus 32x minus 12. And our divisor is x minus 3, the factor, which is x minus 3. So take the first term, 9x cubed, divide by the first term, you get 9x squared, that will be the first term of our quotient. Take 9x squared and multiply both the terms, you need to know how to apply the long division method. So when you multiply, it's 9x cubed minus 27x squared. On the next term, change the sign, invert the sign, sign of all the terms. So these two will be cancelled. Minus 15 plus 27 is plus 12x squared. Bring down the next term. Minus 32x. Repeat the process. Take the first term 12x squared. Divide by the first term. So you get 12x. So that will be the next term of your quotient. Now take 12x. Multiply both the terms will be 12x squared minus 36x and then invert the sign this will be cancel 30 minus 32 plus 36 is 4x bring down the next term minus 12 so apparently take the first term divide by x you will get 4 take 4 and multiply both you get 4x minus 12 invert the sign so it will be cancelled, your remainder is 0. Okay, here there is something you need to take note. Since x minus 3 is a factor of this function, your remainder is supposed to be, must be 0. You are not supposed to get any other number. If you get any other number, 
you might have made a little mistake here. So you got to be very careful about it. If this is not a factor, you can get any number here. But in this case, x minus 3 is a factor. So the remainder must be 0. So you can write this function f of x as the divisor times the quotient 9x squared plus 12x plus 4. And they want you to fully factorize it. You are not supposed to stop here. Now we have one factor. We are going to factorize this quadratic function also. You can use your calculator to factorize this. So you will have three factors. So the two factors are minus 2 by 3 and minus 2 by 3. So take it as x equals minus 2 by 3. So the factors will be 3x plus 2 into 3x plus 2. When you multiply you get 9x squared. 6x plus 6x, 12x, 2 times 2, 4. So this is the fully factorized form of f of x. Part c, solve 9 cos cube theta minus 15 cos square theta minus 32 cos theta minus 12 equals 0 within the interval 0 to 360 degree. Give your answer to one decimal place. This question carries two marks. Here they want you to solve this trigonometric equation. This looks, looks like a different equation but as I always say check with part A the previous parts whether these two are connected when you compare them you have 9 in the place of x you have cos theta and 15 x squared minus 32 x so this function can be factorized in this form x minus 3 into 3 x plus 2 or in other words the solutions of this function is x is 3 and x is minus 2 by 3. There are two solutions. We can use these solutions here because this equation is same as this one. Only thing you have cos theta in the place of x. So the two solutions of this equation will be cos theta is 3 and cos theta is minus 2 upon 3. We need to solve these equations separately within this given limit 0 to 360. When you look at the first one, cos theta can never be 3 because the maximum value of cos theta is 1, min uh, minimum value is minus 1. So there is no solution for this equation. So we are going to consider only this equation. You need to know how to solve a trigonometric equation. The first part, find the principal value, which is cos inverse of, don't worry about the negative sign, 2 upon 3. Keep your calculator in degree mode and find this principal value. Then we are going to use the ASTC diagram and find all the solutions within this limit. So the answer is 48.189 etc. They want the answer in one decimal place. So our principal value will be 48.2 degree. Now draw this ASTC diagram. ASTC and look at this limit 0 to 360, 0 to 360. You need to look for the quadrants where your cos theta is negative. Here it's positive, this quadrant also positive. So we have 1 and 2 quadrants. Here your theta is 180 minus theta and 180 plus theta. So the two solutions are 180 minus 48.2, 180 plus 48.2. 131.8 degree and 228.2 degree. That's it. So this is how we solve this trigonometric equation. Question number 7. Kim starts working for a company. In year 1 her annual salary will be 16,200 euros. In year 10 it is predicted to be 31,500 euros. Model A assumes that her annual salary will increase by the same amount each year. Part A, according to Model A, determine Kim's salary in year 2. The question carries 3 marks. Okay, here, in year 1, Kim's starting salary in year 1 is 16,200 euros. Year 2, we are not sure. And year 10, it's 31,500. In Part A, they say the increment is... The same amount every year, it, it follows the model A, it assumes that the salary is increased by same amount every year. So you need to know 
when the initial condition is increased by same amount every year or every week or every time the sequence follows arithmetic sequence if it increases by every same percentage every year it's a geometric sequence so in this case it increases by same amount every year so this is supposed to be a arithmetic sequence our first term is 8 our tenth term you can write it as 8 plus 9 d so using this you can find d so you can straight away find the second term second term is 8 plus d. so first we equate this 8 plus 9 d is 31500 replace a by the first term 16500 so your 9 d will be this minus this so i think it's 15000 d will be 15,000 divided by 9. That's the common difference. Now they want you to find her salary in year 2. That means they are talking about second term here. Second term is 8 plus 1d. So a okay this is not 500 it's 200. So it's supposed to be 15,300 divided by 9. So A plus D, 15,300 divided by 9. That's our second term, A2. So this is uh, 1700. So when you add them, 17,900. 17,900, that's our second term. Now model B assumes that her salary will increase by the same percentage each year. Part B. According to model B, determine Kim's annual salary in year 2. Give your answer to the nearest 10. The model B assumes the salary increase by same percentage every year. So we know for sure that it follows a geometric sequence. In geometric sequence, if this is the first term, the 10th term is A times R to the power 10 minus 1. So you equate this, you can get the value of R. And they want you to find the, the second term or the Kim salary in year 2. So equate this A times R to the power 9 is 31500. So R to the power 9 is 315 divided by 162. R is 9th root of 315 divided by 162. That's the value of R. Now, the second term is 8 times R to the power 2 minus 1 or R to the power 1. So, your second term will be 8 times R, 9th root of 315 divided by 162. So, it's 16200 times 1.0. Seven seven multiply it. So you get one seven four four two point two eight six something. But they want the answer to the nearest ten. So don't leave this as your answer. The nearest ten is one seven four four zero. That's her salary in the year two. Part C. Calculate according to the two models the difference between the total amounts that Kim is predicted to earn in earn from year 1 to year 10 in closing. Give your answer to the nearest 10. Okay, here in part C, according to both models, they want you to find the difference of the amount that Kim is going to earn in 10 years time, including the year 10. So model A follows the arithmetic sequence, model B geometric sequence. So find the sum of this series for 10 terms and then find the difference between them. So here the, for the first one, sum of 10 terms is 10 upon 2 into first term plus the last term, 31500. Here S10 is first as uh, A into the common ratio is greater than 1. Don't use the rounded value 1.077 because here we are going to put r to the power 10 divided by r minus 1. So when you raise to when you raise this r to power 10 if you put the rounded figure your total value will be affected. 
So I'm going to use this number here. So for the first one, it's 238500. So for the second one, first I'm going to find the value of this. So it's 1.076684332. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this formula and instead of R, I'm going to use my answer here. So it will give you the exact value, which is 231019. I round it to the nearest 10. 19 is 2. Now subtract that. It's 7480. The difference between these two is 7480 pounds. So that's our answer.